I coached my kids 12 U travel team this year and I found like I'm not a huge X's and O's guy. I play the game and manage the game on a lot of feel, but I was more like a like a life coach, I felt like, to these kids. <laughs> how, how do you approach yeah. it? Are you the X's and O's or more like to put the arm around and, and tell you how tough the game's going to be? Well, I think I think you kind of have to do a little bit of both, especially, you know, the, the, the higher you go, the more complex the problems that these guys are going to have off the field. So I actually love that part of the job is is being a little bit of a life coach because I've made plenty of mistakes and you try to keep guys from making the same mistakes. And then, you know, the baseball is, is a bonus and just being able to use my experiences in the game, good and bad, to help shorten the learning curve for these guys. I mean, there's a ton of talent here. It's a lot of fun to be around guys that, that have enthusiasm for the game, that that want to make it a career and you know they're they're eager to learn so I, I love sharing with those guys uh, Lance when we look at young talent d -Row always says I, I, I didn't look like that at 17 and 18 yeah. are they just bigger faster stronger than you remember Oh, 100 percent. I mean, there's I mean, I couldn't have been in this group, um, you know, when I was a, a senior in high school. Uh, these guys are the, the physicality is the one thing I think that, that's changed the most since when I was coming up to now. Uh, they're just they're just so much more advanced in their weight training and their nutrition and, you know, the way they take care of themselves. So uh, it, it's impressive. Wow. Were you worried about nutrition at that age? <laughs> really? I wasn't worried uh, about the no. nutrition at 30. Isn't that, isn't that crazy, <laughs> no. though, Lance? I'm not worried about it now. So, I mean, I don't know when I will. Hey, Lance, do you ever, though, take him aside just for a minute? And show him your stats? And say, hey, boys. <laughs> don't in you In 1997, for the Rice Owls, I threw up 431 with 41 and 134. Yeah, that was a hot bat era. Oh, hot bat. Oh, my word. Just, I mean, just make, just make contact, and it'll go out of the ballpark. But, I mean, so, look at this. Yeah, Sixth I mean, it's, uh, most... Uh, home runs by a switch hitter in Major League Baseball. No, I, he was one of the best, count him on my, on my hand, one of the best hitters of, of my generation. From start to finish, from the time I saw him on the backfield at Kissimmee, I hit in the offseason with him a couple of times with Sid Holland and Carl Crawford down in Houston. So I've spent a lot of time with Lance, and he's just, I mean, were you always raking, Lance? Kind of take me through your evolution as a hitter. I mean, I was always a good hitter, you know, from from a young age on. I don't know that I was always the best hitter. I think I really kind of hit my stride um, after my freshman year in in college. Um, got a lot stronger, you know, started lifting weights, and and um, I think that's where I, I made my biggest jump. Is kind of between my freshman and sophomore year at Rice, and then, um, you know, I think that's the key, and, and I, that's one message that I have for these guys is if you want to get to where uh, you eventually want to end up, you got to get a little bit better every year. You can't ever yeah. reach that plateau so you know it's the guys that do that that get a little better get a little bit better get a little bit better year in and year out then those are the guys that are going to end up playing in the big leagues and so um, you know some of that happens naturally some of that happens due to your own personal effort uh, but but it's something that's essential if you're going to be a you know if you're going to make a career out of baseball. Lance I want to ask you because I don't have any knowledge in this field and I literally as as a as I'm asking you your advice I had a ton of kids on my team I should say a ton three that tried to switch hit mm. Mm. and I didn't do it so I'm like reluctant I'm like man you're really gonna have this a B from your bad side in a big spot I know it's 12 and so I kind of I struggled yeah. with it I struggled with it what what would be your message to me and other coaches out there coaching kids that want to do it from both sides of the plate. Well, I mean, I think that's where you kind of have to help kids understand whether they can or not. I mean, and you can tell pretty quickly when you watch a guy if he has the requisite athleticism and ambidextrousness, if that's even a word, um, <laughs> to, to make it happen. Um, but, I, you know, it's really tough to do. I mean, I, if I had a son, I'd probably make him hit left-handed and just keep him on the left side of the plate only. Um, you know, I, I think there are guys that can do it. I remember my dad was one of those guys that made me hit one – you know, left one at bat, right one at bat, no matter what the situation was. And I vividly remember teammates wanting me to go up there right-handed um, because that was my stronger side in those big spots. And, you know, but I've, over the course of time, you know, they didn't want me to be up there right-handed ever. So, mm -hmm. you know, that was kind of my left My left side took over as my dominant side. Uh, so I, it's it, there's I don't think there's a right answer. 
I mean, I yeah. wouldn't shut everybody down that wants to switch hit, but I do think it's a rare skill, and it, it just requires, um, you know, a, a special skill set to be able to do it effectively. Is there a right answer on how to teach hitting in general? Because all the guys who come in here get to their most powerful position in different ways. We talk yeah. about it, leg kick, no leg. What, what do you teach? There's not a one-size-fits-all. Well, I, I, they're, they're, you're right. There's not a one-size-fits-all in terms of your your stance, you know, your setup, your timing mechanism. But there is a one-size-fits-all when it comes to the absolutes that make good hitters good. And so you have to get into, you know, just look at this MLB logo right here. When you're loaded up, you know, that the bat has to look somewhat like that with the barrel closer to the pitcher. Um, a lot of guys hit with a laid off barrel. That's not an efficient position. You know, you watch all the really good hitters. Despite what they think they do, they all pretty much have a, a reasonably flat swing, which means they keep the barrel behind the ball a long time. It buys a margin for error. So for me, it's it, I try to simplify hitting. I want to get into an athletic position at the start. I want to load my hands efficiently. I want to have the barrel get to the hitting zone as quickly as possible and I want to keep the barrel behind the ball as long as I possibly can, resisting rotation and the temptation to turn to the pull side. So um, I, I don't think even if you, know you anymore, If you do Lance. those things... <laughs> <laughs> if you can... <laughs> Oh my if you God. can ex I've been coaching now. I've that's been right. coaching just, for that five was or six like, years that's now. That's our t-shirt. So. That's a t-shirt. Yeah. you got to just clip it 